All right, this one might be morally or ethically gray. Depends on where you sit on the fence. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. And today, uh, I'm going to be showing you how to shunt mod your video card without voiding your warranty. So I figured everyone already knew about this, but uh, I had a viewer of mine that request that I do this on video. So that's why I'm going to be showing this to you guys today. Now, where, why, and how this might be morally gray is you're, you're essentially modifying your card without the manufacturer knowing that you modified it so you can keep your warranty. So you can potentially... You could potentially destroy the card and get a free card out of it if you know what I mean like that's 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 the one uh, argument of the um, that's one side of the fence the other side of the fence and I would say this is the fence that I sit on um, is the Nvidia Turing cards specifically and Pascal they are power limited for no good reason other than product segmentation. Like the, uh, the VRMs are constructed in such a way where they can actually output twice as much power as what the BIOS is limiting it to. So say NVIDIA, well let's say they have a 2070 Super and it's uh, $600. And they have a 2080 Super, and it's, you know, $800. Yeah, sure, the the 2080 Super has four more SMs, I believe, or six more SMs. But that's not all it has. It also has a much higher power limit. And as you go up the stack, and the more money you spend, conveniently, why do you get more power limit available to you? Or on the same token, if you're buying a 2080 Ti Black Edition, actually, they go so far as to change the actual die on those on those video cards so that you can't flash a higher power limit. That's how far Nvidia goes on these things. So you buy a uh, 2080 Ti Black Edition, you can't flash it with a higher power limit BIOS. You can't. You can't flash it with another vendor's BIOS. You can't flash it. You can't do anything with it. They they want you to make sure that you get a certain performance for the amount of money that you paid. So what they're telling you essentially is if you wanted more power limit, you should have bought a higher priced card. You should have spent $1,600 for, uh, for the win three or something like that. Not here. Hell no. I, I will mod every card I have to in order to get the performance I need because I shouldn't be limited... I, my performance shouldn't be limited based on what NVIDIA arbitrarily thinks is a price to performance value. If I buy a piece of PCB and copper, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want with it. Um, and, I, and I know that the warranty comes into play here, but... Yeah, my, my argument is there shouldn't be a damn power limit in the first place. So I'm going to mod the damn card. And if it does blow up, it's not because of the damn hardware mod. It's because the card was defective in the first place. Anyway, that's my, that's my little uh, rant there on that. But what we're going to be doing here, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I... Obviously, I have no liability of you doing this, blah, blah, blah. You know, you do all your own crap at your own risk and law and all that crap. But anyway, this is how you do it. I have a, um, what the hell is this? A 1650 Super. Um, it's the only card that I haven't shut and modded yet. So we're just going to be doing it on this one just because I have it. But um, it, the, the process is the same for all Turing and Pascal cards. So, first thing that you need are these little resistors that you can just bulk buy. I'll, if you're interested, I'll put the, uh, I actually have the part number here. I'll put the part number down below of the ones that you want to order. Um, they're like, I don't know, like 10 cents a piece. You just order them. I, I order them at 20 at a time, uh, pff, whatever, right? I actually go through quite a bit of these. Um, so I, I literally mod every single NVIDIA card that I come across just because, why not, right? 
Um, yeah, so these resistors, they're I think they're eight milliohm. I'm not really sure. Uh, I got I have I gotta, I'll put the put the part. In, yeah, I think they're eight milliohm. I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's take this card apart, and I'm gonna put a camera down to show you what I do here. So the other tool tools you're gonna need here, you got your resistors. Um, you need a digital multimeter to find out which shunt you need to shunt. And you need a glue gun to place the resistor in the right spot. And the reason you use the glue gun is because if anything happens to the card, you can peel the glue away and there's no record of you modifying the card. On a random note though, like, come on Gigabyte, what the hell kind of a cool, one heat pipe? I mean, I... I guess that's enough for a 1650 Super, but damn, come on, invest a little bit more money in your coolers, Gigabyte. What the hell is this shit? Anyway. Alright, this is as close as I can kind of get the camera to the card here. It looks good on my screen, but I mean, we'll see it in the final, uh, on the export here. But, so, what you want to do first is you want to get your multimeter. I mean, I can already tell where it is, but you will see on the card right here, let me move this over here. You'll see on the card, one of these resistors, it looks exactly the same as the ones that you buy, but you'll see one of these for every power plug that you have. And you'll also see one for the PCI Express power down here. So, oh yeah, so this gigabyte, okay, so you can obviously see that there's one down here as well. This one is clearly going to be for the PCI Express because it's the closest one. But some other cards have them all three in like, like they'll have three next to each other up here. So you have to actually test to see which ones that you have to shunt. So just for argument's sake and taking no chances, we want to see if this shunt resistor connects to this power plug. So all you have to do is just connect one lead to one side of the resistor, other side, uh, yeah, here we go. It's always gonna be the top three here. If it's an eight pin, the, the two on the left here aren't gonna read anything. It's always gonna be the three power ones. And the other, um, the other five pins are your ground, so they're not gonna show up. But, so if I put the lead here and here, my uh, my digital multimeter reads zero ohms, which means that this this leg of this power connector is directly tied to this resistor. So this is the one that we're gonna want to shunt. On the flip side, if I put a lead here on this shunt and one on the very left of the PCI Express leg, zero ohms. So I know this one is directly connected. I mean, obviously. This is the closest and that's the closest, but you kind of get the idea. So if you had three of them here, you would have to test all three and see which two connects to the two uh, uh, power plugs here. And that's how you know which one you have to shunt. There's also tons of guide on this, uh, guides on this online. You, you, I mean, look at all the other guides. You can't really mess it up. It's super easy. The next step here, oh, oops. The next step is I think my glue gun should be hot enough by now, but... I'm going to take one of these resistors out here. Uh, give me a second. Take a resistor out. And what you want to do here, get a, get a pair of uh, tweezers or whatever you need to get. So grab a pair of tweezers, grab your, uh, your resistor here. And it's, it's the, ex the ones that you order are the exact same size as the ones that are on here. Ah, oh, crap. So, Actually, I don't even need tweezers for this one. But all you want to do is you want to take this resistor, just place it over top of the stock one. Just like this. It doesn't matter which side or which um, rotation you do. It's, it's the same way either way. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. But there you go. So I literally... I'm not sure if you can see that really clearly. I think... He, yeah, it looks good. I literally just put the 8 milliohm resistor over top of the other one. Now, what other guides will tell you to do here is to solder both sides, which you can. If you if you solder both sides, that's going to be a permanent connection. That will definitely will void your warranty. 
there is no way in hell you're going to be able to desolder that after and make it look like you didn't touch the card. And this is where my method comes in here. So my method, what I usually do first, because I don't want to take the card apart again after, what I usually do, I will take a little screwdriver like this, I will put pressure on the actual resistor to make sure that I know that both sides are contacting. So press down just a little bit. There you go. Now I know that I like the, the amount of pressure that I'm putting, I know that's making contact on both sides. Take the glue gun, put a little bit of glue on both sides of this. One side. Two sides. Now, what this lets you do is once the glue dries up, you let go. That doesn't take long. Give it a second here. Just blow on it. All right. So what this does, you kind of, you left both of the ends kind of open. So you can go back with your multimeter and check to make sure that the connections are good. So let this go. Here we go. Come back to the old uh, multimeter here. Now, before you put the card back together, go to the very top of the resistor that you just put down, touch the lead, zero ohms. So I know this side is good. Same with the other side, zero ohms. So I know this side is good as well. Now you can cover the whole thing in glue and leave it. So now that I know that both sides are touching, I'm gonna get my screwdriver back here, reapply some pressure just so the thing doesn't move around and just cover the thing in glue. There we go. Now, why is this better than soldering it? What is it, like why, like why do you think it's better than soldering it? If you ever need to take the resistor out for warranty purposes or an RMA, the glue doesn't, doesn't, the glue is untraceable. The, like the, the glue gun is so soft that you can peel it off and take the resistor off and there's never any evidence of you ever being in here. And uh, you're allowed to take the, uh, the cooler off to repaste your card. So you have a, you have a reason for taking the cooler off and you, you, have, you were never here. You, were like, you know what I mean? If you have to arm a, uh, arm a card in the future. So what this does, it, uh, oh also, what quick point. You can't just put a wire over top of it. NVIDIA with this generation uh, Turing cards, there's a fail safe that if it doesn't detect a resistance here at all, it'll just put the card in safe mode and you won't be able to go over 300 megahertz. So you actually have to use these little resistors that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put in the description. You have to use these ones to get your shut mod to work. But this essentially increases your power limit by... Um, oh God, I'm not sure. 50%? It's, it's like, it makes it so you won't hit the power limit with the card while you're gaming. Anyway, that's, that's what you want. Anyway, I mean, I guess I'll leave the card like this. I'm going to do some, uh, I'll do some benchmarks with it in the future just to see how far a 1650 can go. But, uh, 1650 super. But yeah, the only reason I bought this was for the, uh, Turing and, uh, the encoder for, uh, my stream. But, um, yeah, I mean... Maybe it'll push some good numbers. Who knows? But uh, I'm gonna wipe the paste off, put some cryo on it, put it back together, and I'll be back. All right, there we go. So back together now. Um, I'll do some benchmarks another time. But you might ask, what made me think of doing this in the first place? Um, yeah, remember the uh, 2080 Ti Black Edition? I, when they, when the 2080 Ti's first came out, I refused to pay $1,200 for a Founders Edition one or $1,200 for, uh, the XC or, or like, uh, Asus one, just an aftermarket one, right? I waited for the base models to come out. So when EVGA posted on their website, um, $9.99 for a base model one, like a black one, I jumped on that one. So I'm thinking... Damn, I'd saved $200 and I'll just order an EK water block even if the cooler does suck. 
and then I'll just run it in, in, a, in a loop and I'll get my performance that way. You can't imagine how pissed off I was when I got the card and I couldn't boost it past 1700 megahertz. Um, because they locked the power limits down so hard and you can't actually flash that chip because it, it's a TU-102 dash like non-A, like you can't flash those ones. So instead of returning the card and buying a uh, a new one, I'm like, for, like forget it. I I'm gonna find a way to power to get get the power limits off this thing. That's how I did all this research and found out this way. But I also wasn't gonna void my warranty. They screw me over. I'm gonna screw them over too. That's that's the way it works. And you know what? You know what the uh, the funny thing is, EVGA like the the one that I have actually has Samsung um, memory chips on it and they overclock to 16 gigabits a second. So like, and that's the same one in that video that does 2200 megahertz. So literally I have one of the best performing 2080 TIs that you can actually buy. Like it is at the Kingpin TI level of what you get. And had I have left it alone, it would have been a 1700 megahertz gimped locked down piece of shit that they don't want you to overclock. So I ended up putting a water block on it, liquid metal, and shunt mod, and I got a 2200 megahertz 16 gigabit per second uh, 2080 Ti for $999. Well, plus the 150 for the water block, so 1150. So I'm getting. $1,800 2080 Ti performance for 1150 That's why they don't want you to shunt mod. That, that, that's why they that's why they artificially limit um, the power limits on all these damn cards. And that's why I don't feel guilty for doing it this way. If they ever decide... Like, AMD's going down this road too, man. It's a... Like... The fifth, like the 5700 non-XT is such a sick card once you actually download the uh, Igor's Lab uh, power play tables and remove all the power limits. It, it's literally a 1080 Ti, but, uh, but you have to remove all the power limits. Like, like stop putting these damn power limits on these things. Like, I don't know. It, companies will be companies, man. But you as a consumer, you gotta, you gotta do what you can to get those frames. That's what we're here about, right? It's also the same thing, like, taking the older Intel Xeons and, like, covering some of the pins on the back to unlock the multiplier and stuff. Like, like, stop, stop trying to lock down your users and then maybe they won't have to come up with all this crazy shit to try and get performance out of the things that they purchased. You know what I mean? As the purchaser, you shouldn't be locked down by all this nonsense because they just want more money out of you. Hell no, nah, man. You put that resistor on, you glue it on, and if it breaks, you send it back, and you do it 10 times if you have to. Get them to stop power limiting your shit. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys learned something. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Um, and again, you have your own liability for all this crap. I'm just showing you um, how to shunt mod your card safely. Not damage anything, you know, know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, hopefully you learn some, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe, all that yada yada yada, and I will see you guys in the next one. Chase those frames. Talk to you later.